It's crazy to think that the Earth is about 4.5 billion years old, and humans have only been around for about 6 million of those years. What was here before humans even existed? Can we find proof of prehistoric life anywhere? Maybe even in the most unlikely places. We begin in New Jersey, hopping back to millions of years ago. We're going to discover things in New Jersey that haven't been uncovered in years. We are going to chat with an expert about the land, and then we will be going out and doing our own fossil hunt. We will learn how to search for these fossils and learn about exactly what we are finding. We have a lot to learn and a whole adventure to take on. So, let's get started. Around 70 million years ago, the world was in the Cretaceous period. New Jersey was almost entirely underwater. These parts were actually the shallow depths of an ancient ocean, which is why many fossils discovered all over New Jersey are ancient sea creatures. Out of the whole country, New Jersey has the most fossils discovered from the late Cretaceous period. Earth back then was hot. The average temperature globally was 15 degrees hotter than it was today, making New Jersey's climate hot and humid. In the uppermost northern part of New Jersey was the shoreline, where many land creatures lived, such as the state's dinosaur, the Hadrosaurus, a duck-billed, 10-foot-tall herbivore, and the Dryptosaurus, a cousin of the T-Rex. Inside this ocean lived many creatures, such as plesiosaurs, ancient turtles, sharks, and many different kinds of invertebrates. We will be hunting in southern Jersey in the great ancient ocean and seeing what we can uncover at what has been left for millions of years. But first, let's discover what's happening up north. I am on my way to the William Patterson University of New Jersey in Wayne, where I have the pleasure to talk to Dr. Martin Becker, who is a professor in the Environmental Science Department. Since 2006, fossil has been found all over campus. We are going to talk about how these fossils got here and where they came from. So, this is a crazy story. How were these fossils found and who found them first? Well, um, it began in 2006 when I came to William Patterson University. Um, my career, I've spent uh, a lot of time outside um, collecting fossils and studying rocks and geologic process. And, and I started walking around on our campus and then just looking at the different bedrock geology, which is basalt and igneous rock, which doesn't have any fossils in it. But the surface geology is a bunch of what's referred to as glacial erratics. Rocks that have been brought in from areas as far north as the Adirondacks, which are really well-known fossiliferous areas. So what's happened is, is our last ice age has come across this area, moving very slowly, and picked up rocks from the source areas to the north and slowly delivered them to our campus. And when the glacial ice melted in our last glaciation, all of the different fossiliferous, they're termed erratics, are just pepper all throughout our campus, which is really, really interesting. So, and what I've done over the last, since 2006, basically, is take students up on our campus and all around our campus area exploring. And we've recovered a lot of really interesting fossils across our adventures and hiking around looking. It's always, you know, for students, the first few that you find are super exciting, you know. It's like, wow, look at that. Is it, you know, 380 million year old fossil of a clam? Once you find one, you pretty much know you're going to be good to go <laughs> and find others. The fossils are primarily invertebrates, brachiopods, which are a variety of clam. There's um, these ancestral squid-like creatures, which uh, are real prizes. They're called monoloids. They were really exciting. And over, you know, the last X amount of years, we found all kinds of varieties of these different types of fossils by just exploring. And some you can find right outside, um, I don't know, maybe 50 yards from the Science East and Science West complex, just in oh, the, wow. land, <laughs> the way to the parking lot. So, um, and a lot of it, you know, it's really, our campus is located in just such a cool place to go observe all of these things. And that's really a key point, you know, we're, we're right in the middle of suburbia. We're, what, 22 miles from New York City? <laughs> so, I think that's just also super fascinating as well. So, you know, but, So if anyone right. can go out and find these fossils, how does somebody begin? Like, how do you know what to look um, for? What I typically do if I'm teaching people to go fossil collecting is the first thing is you have to know rock types. So what you always do when you're looking for fossils is you key into sedimentary rock. So once you can begin to exclude all the rock types that don't have any fossils in them, 
then you really can begin to gear and tool your search down to the rock types that do have fossils in them. Do you think it's important to study paleontology and why? Yes, absolutely. Paleontology is independent of what any person believes. And I think that's a really important thing. And it becomes more important now, maybe more so than ever, as we enter into sea level rise and climate change. These are for real things. And these are real problems. And, you know, in order to be able to begin to solve those real problems, we have to begin to agree on understanding time and change. And that's why paleontology becomes really important. Okay? I couldn't agree with you more. Thank you so much. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> So we learned about some of what we can find up north, so now let's head down south to see what else we can discover. Our journey takes us to Holmdel, New Jersey, where we are meeting Kyle McCulley, a senior geology major at Rowan University and an experienced fossil hunter. Kyle has found some amazing fossils over the past couple of years. We are meeting up with him to go on our own fossil hunt and hopefully find some pretty cool things. So Kyle, we are in the middle of the woods. Can you tell us where we are and why this area is so good for fossil hunting? Yeah, of course. So we're at Raminescent Brook in Holmdel Township. And this area is good for fossils because of the age of the sediments that are preserved here. So these are all Cretaceous age uh, material. The stream cuts through that layer and exposes the fossils for us to find. Uh, I have a pretty good amount of experience fossil hunting. I've been going fossil hunting ever since I was a kid. When I was a little kid, I was obsessed with dinosaurs, like a lot of younger kids are, except I never really grew out of that. So uh, once I found out I could find fossils in New Jersey, I, it was as excited as you could imagine. North Jersey has uh, different age rocks, so they're mostly Triassic or Jurassic up there. You can find dinosaur footprints in North Jersey. Down here, it's mostly Cretaceous stuff or even younger, like uh, Eocene and Miocene age stuff. So in this area, the best your best bet is bringing like a, a small shovel and a, uh, a strainer or sifter. Other parts of the country, like I mentioned, you might get a rock hammer for. There aren't too many sites in New Jersey that you need that kind of material. And at this site, or others like it, you can even just scan the banks with no real materials and uh, find some fossils. What advice would you give to somebody that's hunting fossils for the first time? I'd tell them not to be discouraged if you don't find anything right away. It can be really tricky getting a good search image right off the bat. Once you figure out what you're looking for and realize what that fossil looks like against the gravel or against the dirt where you're at, you'll have a better bet of finding fossils. Awesome. Well, I'm very excited, so... Yeah, me too. I say let's start hunting. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. So one of the methods that we talked about for fossil hunting was sifting. So I'll, I'll give you guys a little rundown on how to do that. So you want to find an area like we're at with a lot of gravel either piled up on the banks or in the stream bed here. Um, and you take a few scoops of that into your sifter. So let me get that settled. You want to look for gravel because uh, where the gravel's piling up, that's where the shark's teeth will pile up also. That yeah, should be good. And you'll take it to a deeper area of the stream. And then just shake it like that until uh, the water coming out of it is clear and all the dirt's gone. So how do you know the difference between a rock and a fossil? So a lot of the fossils will have a sort of symmetry to them, oh, like this one. <laughs> this is a little crow shark, uh, the scientific name is Squalacorax. It's got nice little serrations on the side of it. These are probably my favorite to find here, just because of the way their serrations are. That's awesome. Yeah. Once you find a spot where you're getting any in your sifter, you know you're in a good spot, so. All right, so you wanna give it a shot? Yes. All right. So dig like right here. Okay. And then just shovel right into the sifter. All right, yep. perfect. Now, take it over here. I'll sift it, because my hand's already got wet and gross. All right. No. So what am Have I at it. Out? Take out all these all these okay. things you can notice as like obvious rocks. Okay. Like these. 
Pretty much There's anything. Orange yeah, the orange ones and anything bigger than like a quarter in diameter. Because nothing here is that big. Oh, oh my god! Yeah, there's a little shell impression. Got a little shell. Yeah, that's a brachiopod impression. Oh my god! Wait, so what is it? What's the name of it? It's a brachiopod. I don't know the exact type, but brachiopod. they're similar to clams, but the the mechanics of how their shell open and close are different, as well as a bunch of other things. But yeah, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, that was quick. That was so cool. <laughs> We continued hunting for the next couple of hours, finding some pretty cool stuff. We even met some other fossil hunters in the area. Although I had really good luck the first time, I think my fossil detecting skills need a little bit more work. That's just an indented rock. I think that's just a rock. That is a seed from the black walnut tree. A funky rock. Oh, it's a leaf. <laughs> yeah, that's, those have gotten me I was a like, lot. Ah! Oh, it moves. <laughs> At the end of the hunt, we headed back and decided to meet through Zoom to discuss our finds. Hi Kyle, how are you? Hi Alexa, doing pretty good. Here we are, almost two weeks later, finally uh, taking a look at what we found. Yeah. All right, so what do you want to show first? I'll show some of the bigger ones. They'll be easier to see on, uh, on Zoom. Here's, um, this is a lateral goblin shark tooth. This is probably my biggest of the day. Or this was honestly probably my favorite find of the day. It's it's super, super tiny. But that is an angel shark tooth, which I've never found before. This was my first one. Oh, that's awesome. So that's pretty cool. You found a lot more stuff. <laughs> yeah, I, I found a pretty cool tooth too. I liked this one, which I think you said was a tiger shark. Or a yeah, sand tiger shark. Yeah, that one was nice. Yeah, I liked this one a lot. That was my favorite. And then I think this one was a goblin shark, maybe? Yeah, that looks like, it looks like a goblin shark without much of the root left, but. Yeah, there wasn't. Still pretty good size. Then a fish tooth, which is pretty cool. Oh, fish tooth. Yeah, that one was nice. Yeah, that, was, that was pretty cool. Then um, a couple, of, uh, I found this tooth. I don't know what this is though. There's not much of the root left. That one was either a sand tiger or a goblin, again, I would say. And then uh, my favorite, which was my first find of the whole day, which was the... That, the shell impression, right? Yeah. Yeah, that one was cool. That was a good start to the day. That's all I found. Yeah. I, I also had these two, like, chunks of bone. I'm not entirely sure what they're from. Um, these were a couple nice ones, too. This is a Creta Lamna. That's another one of the mackerel sharks. And this is also a Creta lamna, just a little bit bigger. So a lot of these, we didn't get on camera us finding them, but this was all the same hunt. Yep, yeah, this was all one day. All in that same spot, it was really cool. Yeah, only a couple hours too. We weren't, we weren't there like a super long time. Not at all. But yeah, we had a good hunt. I'd say yeah. this was successful for my first ever hunt. <laughs> It was awesome. <laughs> yeah, that was definitely a success. Awesome. Thank you so much for coming out with me and explaining what all these are and teaching teaching us a little something about shark's teeth. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. It was a lot of fun. Thank you. Our planet holds so much ancient history. It's incredible to think that we can look almost anywhere and find proof of that. Like what Dr. Becker said, Paleontology can teach us so much about our environment and the changes that have occurred over millions of years. Not only can it give us a look at the past, but also the future. I guess at the end of the day, there's only one question left to be answered. What else can we discover?